Hey all Swabbies, this is your operator speaking, but you can call me OP. And today we're going to discuss suspension of disbelief, and why that's important, and what it is when it comes to video games, books, movies, and so on. To draw an example, before I begin explaining what suspension of disbelief is, I want to discuss Assassin's Creed. I started this with Ezio's first journey. It was the second game in the series. I went eventually back and caught up to him, kind of. So I just started recently Assassin's Creed 3. I know, right? When you're in Assassin's Creed 3, you act as Hatham Kenway, and one of the first things you have to do is assassinate some powdered wig that's up in the box, up in the corner, right? Let's think of a way to make sure that we're following all the tenets of the Assassin's Creed. Pause. In the Assassin's Creed series, we are told to believe that it is possible for an individual to relive their ancestors' lives by downloading their DNA onto a fancy computer. And this is some heavy-handed way for evil people to find artifacts of power. You're also told to believe that assassins hide in crowds regardless of their crazy awesome garb because nobody else dresses like that. We're also told to believe that it's possible to observe your enemy's health meters, which could honestly be a, an overlay as a result of the Atomist system. Same thing with all of the other overlays when it comes to information in your heads-up display. We're told to believe that Ezio and his family line has a secret power that allows them to observe the movements of enemies and allies, a kind of sixth sense. We're told to believe that an individual can jump hundreds of feet from a top of a tower into a bale of hay and be perfectly fine. There are a lot of things where we're told to believe in and we're okay with it because goofing around in the Italian Renaissance is cool. But more importantly, there has been an investment in the humanity of the characters and in the truth of the narrative. There is enough believability going on within that narrative that we're going to bypass all of this crazy random stuff. Now fast forward back to Assassin's Creed 3. Hatham Kenway decides that the best way to go and assassinate this guy, instead of finding some back way around, he decides to climb all over the interior sconces of this opera house. There is no possible way no one saw him. Have you ever been to a theater? You're sitting in the back row, you can see everything. It doesn't matter if the play is enthralling or not. But he doesn't end it there. He continues to go backstage and knocks down a couple of pieces of the set. He goes and stabs the guy, walks out, but doesn't do it any more stealthily than he did when he walked in. And yet people are tackling everybody else. Maybe it wasn't the guy that was climbing all over the interior of the opera house. Somebody just got stabbed in your theater. You know what would be a good idea is to block all of your exits and entrances and make sure nobody leaves so you can interrogate people. Instead, Hatham is all, I'm out to homies, and gets in his carriage and writes off. Now there are plenty of things within the Assassin's Creed narrative that we're told to just believe in and we're okay with that. In Star Wars you have the gimme of the force. Well the reason why is because of the force. Lightsabers and things like that because it's advanced technology. You have these gimmies in these narratives. Well, you have a universal translator inside somebody's wristwatch or something like that in the Mass Effect series. That's why everybody speaks English. Although, funny story about that one. If you have a universal translator, why does Cal Reaver speak in an English accent kind of like Adam Baldwin? And why does Tally Zor of Us Normandy speak in a Russian accent? You have these gimmies within these narratives. You have things that the readers are expected to believe, and we're okay with that because of part of the narrative. You have these rules put in place by the assassins. One of their main tenets is we work in the dark to serve the light. Everything about the other assassins' creeds is blend in, hide, find hay bales, find crowds that you can hide in, find benches or courtesans, use distractions, use smoke. What I'm talking about is suspension of disbelief. Suspension of disbelief was coined in 1817 by a man named Samuel Taylor Coleridge, who was a writer and a philosopher. And he said that it is up to the reader when it comes to a fantastic tale to suspend certain points of believability or truth in order for the narrative to work. And as long as the writer invests enough in the human interest and portions of truth in that narrative, then it will work. Let me give you another example where, frankly, this doesn't work. If you remember in the first Toy Story, Bert, who's kidnapped Bo's sheep. Bert has an attack dog with a force field on him. Well, Woody 
has a dinosaur who eats force field dog. This is something we've all done, but the important thing to remember is that this is child's play. Suspension of disbelief only goes so far before you start creating a narrative that's too unbelievable. Now, I'm okay with all the craziness that happens within Assassin's Creed, but when you break your own rules, that is a problem in the system, and that is something we need to fix. When you want to study somebody who follows all the rules of their magic system, read some Brandon Sanderson. All of his work, every single one of his books, have a fantastic magic system, and he follows the rules they were set in place at the very beginning of the book. Why is this important? Because if we're going to continue to have long narratives like Assassin's Creed, and we're going to make these more complex and require a larger investment of time, then the stories better be worth it as well. Now, I may be alone in this, I may be representing a small part, but the story is important. There are some that would say that it's a tertiary thing when in comparison to gameplay and mechanics. I respectfully disagree to the point that these things should go hand in hand. I think we're past the days where video games are simply a skill set. I think we're past the days where video games are simply a counter to see how many people you can kill on a video screen. I love games for their stories, and I want those stories to work. And that's why we should pay more attention as developers and producers and consumers of games to suspension of disbelief. So, at this point, I want this to be a discussion. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm right. Let's have a conversation about this and see if we can understand exactly what it is that would make a great game. I hope this all makes sense, but regardless, thanks for watching. This is OP out. No rest for the wicked.